Hey guys, welcome back to Billy Ray. Has leaks in the car and they need to be fixed ASAP. Garage. Uh, obviously today's video, we're gonna be fixing some leaks. Uh, I don't know why they developed. You done messed up, A.A. Hey, hey, With coolant in the vehicle, ran it at least 10 to 12 times. No leaks whatsoever. And then I drove the car around the block and now I have four leaky spots. So I'll show you where they are and hopefully have the solution for them. So all the steam ports are leaking. So I got a leak there. Not as bad here, but it's leaking. And then the two little back caps. Yeah, right there, you can see all that orange. And also the thermostat's dripping a little bit. So hopefully I have solutions for that. So right here are my solutions, hopefully to the problem. These are for the steam ports, they're little gaskets, which I have on. I don't know why they're not working. And I'm gonna use some gasket maker, some high temp gasket maker, and hopefully seal it up. Other than that, that's the only leaks on the vehicle. Uh, no oil's leaking, which is good. Uh, transmission's not leaking, nothing's leaking except coolant in dumb little spots. Let me jack that bad girl up, get it up in the air, and I'll start recording the disassembly of everything you need to get out of the way so just in case you're doing a water pump or you're changing the thermostat or something's leaking i'll show you how to take that all apart so let's start digging into this okay guys first you want to start by disconnecting all your sensors that affect the intake manifold is this one your air intake temperature I believe and then down there is our mass air flow sensor because we got because we got to move the intake manifold out of the way in order to achieve success Pitch. there we go okay so that's disconnected and then next disconnect your fan these two little clips in out get out of there there we go okay so Slide them out the bottom, out the leg, there we go, cool. All right, now we're gonna get the intake manifold out of the way. I'm just going to loosen this one. And the one going to the mass airflow sensor, I'm just gonna do this one. And then we got one down here for the cold air intake mounting to the cylinder head. This one's a 17 millimeter. I don't know what yours is gonna have. Okay, you got the bolt. And then hopefully with a little bit of struggle, you can just push this down into here, like so. There we go, we got the cone down there. And this will come out and then get that out. Voila. Your mom's hole. Nice. All right, guys, my plan of attack is to disconnect this hose down there because it is underneath the radiator hose and the plug's over there, but it's kind of a pain in the ass to reach because the power steering cooler is in the way. So, like I said, I'm going to disconnect this hose down there and drain it into a pan. So we'll knock that out and we'll go on to the next thing. Okay, here we go. Get a good grip on this. So let's see what happens here. That was exciting. Let this drain out a little more and then we'll move up to the top part of the engine. All right guys, listen to this little hose clamp up and hopefully we will be able to get this thing out and drained. Okay, there's not a lot in there. That's good. That may be good. Look, just keep that hose back. That'd be great. We'll let it do its thing. It's gonna level out. Okay, so being that nothing's coming out of there, because that hose goes around, that hose comes from around the bottom up to the top, it's not leaking too much. Should have most of it out of the radiator. So, in theory, this should not leak. So I'm gonna loosen this one up, pull it out, and then do it from the water pump side. 
And that should give us the room to get the fan out. So let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Big mess here. Nope. Dry as a bone. Good. Now loosen this guy up. Okay, so I loosen this hose up. So this one should come out. I forgot if I got it off last time. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. And off. Okay, cool. So we're just going to put this to the side. Up here should be good. And then we're just going to disconnect these two lines, pull them off, and just set them aside. All right, guys, got these two lines disconnected. They're just put off to the side. Now, next is the struggle and get this fan out. Now, it is nearly impossible to get this thermostat housing out with the fan in the way because a deep socket's too long and your socket hits this, getting a friggin' box wrench in there sucks. And a smaller socket with an extension is too long, unless you have an itty bitty one, but I do not have that. So we're gonna remove this fan. Uh, best way I found to do it was kind of rock it up this side from the driver's side and try and walk it out. As you will see me struggle here in one minute. Let's just lift this up. Gotta walk this back. Huh, that came out easier than it did last time, so. Ugh. So, came out this way. All right, cool. I shit you not, it was easier coming up this way, and this one just wanted to go to the passenger side. So, just make sure you're clear, don't break your plastic, and we should be Gucci. I don't know if you can see this because of the stupid sun. Uh, yeah, you can. So, thermostat housing, two 10 millimeter bolts, not sure if there's still coolant inside the engine block, but probably keep a pan underneath. Oh yeah, still water in there. I'll take it off the rest of the way. Okay, so I think I see a problem why we were leaking. I don't know if you can notice, but it looks like the gasket came off a little bit and it was on the bottoms, or yeah, it was on the bottom side, so I think that's why we were leaking. Yeah, somehow this thing got pinched up. Yeah, somehow this thing got pinched up and uh, jacked up, so let's see if we can fix that. I'm still putting RTV on this shit, so I'm tired of this freaking thing leaking. Alright guys, I uh, just fixed the gasket in here. Uh, it looks like it's in good shape still. Somehow it folded over, and I think that's, well, that's definitely what was causing the leak. Bless me. So I put it back in. I'm still going to use a little RTV or gasket sealer around here just for insurance purposes because I don't feel like taking this thing out again because it sucks, especially after you got the whole system bled out and then eh, leaks. So yeah, gonna, I'm just going to dry this off a little bit, put a little gasket sealer around just for insurance and throw it back in. Alright guys, I know you don't have to do this and you probably don't either. And the gasket was messed up, so it's not really the gasket's fault, being that it went in crooked, but I went ahead and I put a little gasket sealer just on the, the rubber gasket. I got it seated in right this time. I don't know if it shifted when I bolted it up or what, but should have the problem situated now. So let me slap this bad boy in and we'll go on to the steam pipes. All right, guys, new tool to show off. Finally got an inch pound torque wrench. It is a Tekton, got it off Amazon, it was like 60 bucks. Now I can do this little stuff. I believe these bolts are seven foot pounds, so 84 inch pounds. So I'm gonna give it a little go here and snug it up. There we go. And then this guy down here, locked there, come back to this one, locked, and back down here. All right, cool. So hopefully we are good there. Hopefully. Hey right, guys, I took the catch can out of the way and I'm disconnecting this little crossover line. So this is the bootleg one that I made and actually surprisingly it didn't leak. So my little modification from a hose that I bought chopped up, got a splice in there, tightened it up and to here. So surprisingly that did not leak, which I thought it was. But we're gonna change out that crossover tube and hopefully solve this issue. 
All right, guys, I'm going to remove these two bolts. These are five millimeter Allen keys. I think the stock ones are 10 mil. And let's break this loose and get this off and try and figure out what happened. Screw up. Okay, and then try and fish this out this side. See where we may have gone wrong. That's clean. All right, cool. Okay, so I guess these little rubber gaskets didn't do their job, so I'm gonna put some gasket sealer and also put any original gaskets that go to these. Uh, this kit did not come with a gasket, so I figured that this O-ring would seal, which it did not, so I got the gaskets. I'm gonna throw them on. I'm gonna clean up the little mess I got going in here and get back to you. All right, guys, I went overboard. So I put that little steam port gasket on there. First, I put RTV, then the gasket, and then more RTV because on the back side of the engine, I have these little bastards on there and they still leak. So I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'm freaking gooping these up. Come back here, like so. All right, get this little five millimeter bolt started back up. All right, just get that snug. Okay, guys, got all these little steam port things tightened up. Uh, before I put coolant in, I'm gonna let them sit for a few days tomorrow's fourth of july so i'm gonna be on the jet ski but i'm gonna put the rest of this stuff together and get this thing all but ready to go so we're gonna throw all this shit back in and get it back together now hopefully this hose doesn't fuck me because i put it back on just because it's easier so yeah wish me luck i'm gonna try and get this fan back in okay so apparently i was able to come this way let's see what we got let's come straight down let's see what we got Hose. Let's hit the clip. Let's see if we just get past the clip. There we go. Alrighty. Just wiggle, wiggle. There we go. Come on, a little bit more. Little bitch. Yep, that hose is screwing me. Let's see if we scoot this this way a little bit more. That's good. Yeah, so if you can, keep this hose out of the way, but I am hitting it. No big deal. I'm going to push past it and hope it doesn't break. There we go. Okay, cool. Okay, now get this guy lined up. We're not lined up. There we go. And give it a little push down. They're all lined up. And, all right, cool. So that's back in. Yeah, this hose does make contact. So no big deal. We prevailed. All right, now on this top hose, we're gonna get that out of the way first. And we can probably plug this in right now and get this out of the way. So start with the close one, snap, get in there, snap. And then the far one, snap. Okay, so we're going to start with this hose because it's kind of a pain in the ass to get on. There we go. Stick this guy up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get in there. Okay, got that. And then we'll just do what we got to do. Tighten these down. Right there. All right, that ain't going nowhere. Tug test is good. I'm gonna put the intake back together, get that all squared away, and crank that down, put the battery back in. So I'll stick you back down here. Don't forget your two little coolant lines like I just did. So throw this guy in here for now. Put our bootleg little hose back in. See if I get this over to here. 
thing going nowhere. And where'd you go? There you go. So this little turd in. Just like so. We'll crank you down. Then there's a little groove up here for a hose. Stick it in there. It's out of the way. Let's clear the belt. Okay, so now we'll go for this guy. Get that in place. That's locked in. Mass airflow sensor. Go back in. Now you're in. Tighten this 17 millimeter bolt back in. Alright, that shouldn't go anywhere. Alright, intake's back in. And then don't forget to plug your mass airflow sensor back in. Hey right, guys, I was feeling froggy and put in my skid plate to make sure it cleared the oil filter. Let's see if we get white on in there, but you can probably see the daylight. But it looks like there's probably a little bit more than a quarter inch clearance between the filter and the skid plate. So I was worried about that sandwich plate adapter for the oil pressure sensor causing it to hit the skid plate, but no, it seems to be pretty good. Okay, I'm happy about that skid plate fitting. Yeah, two days for me, five seconds for you. Add coolant, fire this bad boy up. Two days later. All right guys, next day, get everything back together, batteries hooked up, filled the coolant to the cold line, which probably have to add more because I have to get more into the engine. So I'm gonna put the heater core on, I'll well, turn the heat on, full blast, and hopefully it heats up gets all that stuff into the engine block, and we'll be Gucci. Alright guys, we're going to take it for a uh, spin around the block a couple times and hopefully we can resolve this issue. Okay guys, seems like our leaks are fixed. We have no coolant leaking anywhere, which is awesome. Yeah, you can't really see back there, but it's not leaking, trust me. And there's gotta add some coolant to top it off. I'm gonna wait for it to cool down a little bit more. But that does it for this video. I messed with the brakes a little bit. Still couldn't get it going, so gotta tamper with that more. So next video is going to be about the brakes and hopefully we can resolve that issue. I may have to send it to a shop. I don't like doing that, but eh, they have better computers and better crap than I'd have. So may have to bite the bullet and pay for that. No big deal, as long as we can stop. I have front brakes, that's it. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, you know the deal, and I'll see you guys in the next one.